Hi there, I decided to make this video, uh, this short video about the problem that you see on your screen now. This is one of the problems that uh, you were uh, asked to answer uh, or to, to solve in your physical science course and many of you had problems with this. So I thought I would actually make a video to help you answer the questions. At the very beginning, I want, I want to be honest and frank with you. Um, when I first saw this problem, I also didn't answer all of the questions correctly. Uh, at least the very last question about which ball will reach the end of the track. I also, fa I also failed to answer it correctly. But later on, I, I actually understood why uh, the answer is the way it is. Um, so, um, if you made the mistake, don't feel bad. You can at least think that, you know, your physical science teacher uh, also didn't know the correct answer right away. So don't feel bad if you didn't answer the last question correctly. So what the problem? What is the problem? What what are we doing here? We have two identical tracks, A and B, two identical balls. Uh, so they have the same mass and they start at exactly the same speed. And we're answering questions about basically how these two balls um, are moving along these two tracks. And you can see that on one of the tracks, on track A, there is a bump, uh, so a little hill that the that the ball will have to travel up and then come down. And track B, instead of having a hill, it has a dip, so a hole into which it rolls and then comes out of the hole. And we are assuming that there is no friction uh, between the ball and the track, so it's a frictionless track. And we're also assuming that the initial speed is enough so that the ball A is able to make it up the hill and then come down. So ball A will clear the track, just as the ball B is going to clear the track. And and the speed is not too big so that the ball B would somehow also, you know, jump and, and hit the opposite part of the... So the ball B, uh, where's my cursor, is not going to sort of roll and then jump and, and bounce off of the track, okay? It, it, it's a good speed for both A and B to nicely stay on the track and, and roll over the hill as well as stay, you know, uh, rolling down the, down the track uh, and, and come to the end uh, of the track for the ball B. So um, these ideal conditions um, without which we wouldn't be able to, to answer the, these interesting questions. The, the questions are about, um, you know, the kinetic energy or speed of the, of the two balls, how they compare um, at the end of the track we know that at the beginning of the track, the both both ball, balls, since they have the same mass and they have the same speed, so they have the same kinetic energy. The, the first question was, um, how do the kinetic energies compare? Or one of the questions was, how do the kinetic energies compare at the end of the track? How do the speeds compare? And um, if, if, you know, these two, the, the height of the hill is the same as the, as the depth of this, of this dip in here, then, um, you know, whatever ball A loses on, on speed going up, it will gain that same amount going that coming down. And so at the end of the track, it's going to have the same speed. And for ball B, it's the same, except the, the opposite. So it's going to gain speed and then lose, but whatever it uh, gains, it's going to lose the same amount. So again, at the end of the track, it's going to send, uh, end up with the same speed. The interesting part, you know, th this part is sort of trivial, or sorry if I'm saying trivial, but you should be able to pick, pick this, this one up. Um, what's not uh, easy to answer is um, which ball will arrive first at the end of the track or will they arrive you know, at the end of the track at the same time. Of course we're again assuming that they start uh, from their initial position they start moving in the same time. So will, will they arrive at the same time or, or will one of the two balls win? And this is the question that, that I failed to answer correctly the first time um, even though after I I saw the, the solution, it was very easy to understand. So let me show uh, it to you here below. If you look at the speeds or the velocities at which the balls move, at the beginning, that's this position right here, they have exactly the same speed, the same velocity. And then at the end, you know, or starting from this point over here, they again have the same velocities to the very end of the track. Again, we're assuming there's no friction, so there's no, no loss of velocity, just moving, you know, straight, horizontally. Um, the difference comes because of this middle portion, okay? And uh, 
I, I try to to show what's happening uh, with the size of the of the V uh, that shows you know how big velocity is. So for ball A, anywhere anywhere in between um, these two you know vertical lines, these blue lines. Uh, so where the ball is first initially losing speed and then gaining speed, you can see that you know even after it's coming back down, still its speed everywhere everywhere along this part where it's speeding is never larger than the initial speed was here. Now compare that to uh, ball B. Ball B starts rolling down and its speed increases compared to the initial speed. Yeah. And even when it's coming up the hill, so when its speed is going down, it's going down but reaches the original value only when it's already out of the, the, the dip. So everywhere inside it was moving faster than, than originally. So I, I hope you can see now that it is because of this difference in the speeds in, in the middle section that the middle that ball B travels the middle section faster than ball uh, A travels the middle section. They travel the same distance, but because of the velocity is larger everywhere, the speed is larger everywhere for ball B, it's going to clear that middle section faster. And because of that, ball B will arrive first at the end of the track. Um, we could similarly consider the kinetic energy. So if we uh, look at you know how much kinetic energy the two balls had at the beginning, everywhere in the middle section, ball A is is losing kinetic energy, or its kinetic energy is less than at the beginning, because it was gaining potential energy. So everywhere in the middle section, it had more potential energy than here at the beginning, and that potential energy came because uh, kinetic energy decreased. So everywhere in the middle section, ball A has less kinetic energy and thus less speed, and ball B everywhere in the middle section will have more kinetic energy than at the beginning. Um, even though at the end they have exactly the same kinetic energies again, uh, that middle section um, of the track is going to be cleared faster by ball B. So uh, sorry if you didn't get that last question correctly, but I hope that you understand it now. Um, it's an interesting problem to you know to consider. It keeps your mind uh, on its toes, and it's fun to you know ask your parents, you know, show them this picture, and and ask them some of these questions at the dinner table and see what they see see what they answer and uh, it's just an interesting problem to to think about